Hi everyone, welcome back to Custom Residentials Industry Expert Series and this week we've got a very special guest. Uh, we've got Mr Stephen Hart, the author of the uh, Where to Live in Auckland Essential Home Buyers Guide. Obviously a very popular book and to be honest with you, um, the first video we did with Stephen was very, very popular. So here we go again. Hey look, we really appreciate your time. Um, I know you're a busy man and I know our clients certainly value your opinion on things. So look, well, let's just roll straight into it. Um, there's two schools of thought out there. One school of thought says that um, Auckland's prices on the city fringe are way overinflated, crazy and unsustainable. And others are saying that, hey look, we've still got a long way to go. This is actually relatively cheap in comparison to even cities like Sydney or Melbourne. Where does Stephen Hart see where we sit at the moment? Right, okay. Well, I'd be in the second camp, I think. You know, I think that um, City Fringe is such a you know, loose description, really. I mean, in a West City Fringe, I think it's still got a lot of potential. That's not necessarily the same for the whole of Auckland. But, um, but what we're going to see, I mean, if we think about Inner West, and then we take an area like Greylin, for example, because they're all different, all of the, the different neighbourhoods. But what we're seeing with places like Grey Lynn is they're, they're morphing, they're actually changing in terms of their population profile. So they're appealing to a new potential buyer, if you like. So if you look at the, the population profile of Grey Lynn, for example, according to the latest census, 13% of the people are Pacific peoples. That's going to change. You know, if you look at Renew Era, it's only 1%. So once Grey Lynn comes into other people's sort of um, potential shopping areas or, or whatever as a place to live, then it changes. So if it's stuck at the same population profile, it probably is overpriced. But it's now up there, believe it or not, it'll be like Hern Bay, you know? So it's becoming more um, established and attracting new buyers. So that means it gets another kick in terms of price appreciation potentially. That's really interesting, really, really interesting. So you've taken a look behind the scenes in terms of the demographics who actually, who move in here. Yeah, okay. but I mean, I think anecdotally, you know, um, we're reading in the papers and on the news, just recently there was a, a sale at 1.8 for a Dunham Villa sort of thing. Grey Lynn in particular is coming up on people's radar as somewhere that they perhaps didn't consider in the past, but now should. So it's opened itself up to a new market that previously wouldn't have considered the place. So that's reinvigorating its growth. Cool, thank you very much. Now, just if we take the, the wider Greater Ponsonby area, um, do you ever see in the near future supply catching up with the demand that's out there? Um, yes, all things come in cycles. Um, whether it's gonna happen in a year or two, probably not. Um, but once buyers and sellers, well, once we finally shake off this recession that's, you know, dogging us all, then, and, you know, buyers and sellers become more comfortable with taking on more debt um, and more comfortable and confident about the economy and they're prepared to buy and sell more freely, then we will reach a sort of equilibrium. But it's probably at least two years away. Well, you have written a very popular and informative book, Helping Buyers. Um, you're dealing with them on a daily basis. What, what are the, what's the mood of the buyers out there at the moment? They're frustrated. Frustrated because there's a shortage of listings, but also that just about everything is going for sale by auction. So the net result is inevitably they're losing out on a, on a lot of uh, auctions. And because they've paid for due diligence, building inspections, valuations. It's a very expensive process and you've got to feel sorry for them because they're getting smacked in the pocket with the whole thing. So frustration, but what's the choice? They have to compete in the marketplace as it exists. Yes, and that, that big one, I know I always come away from an auction feeling, you know, there's been six or seven people interested who have done their homework and yeah. spent the money and, and only one, yeah. one person secures the keys and it, it's, it is tough. Yeah, I, you know, I think it's a, maybe it's a, a question for another occasion, the whole auction thing, but um, certainly during these times, I can understand buyers getting a bit despondent if they've lost out two, three, four times. Yeah, 
absolutely. Now, taking into account all your knowledge of the, the local market um, and general economic terms, and thinking specifically about Greater Ponsonby, what do you think our outlook is for capital gain over the next 24 months? Um, good, um, generally. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot to basically um, recommend the place, and the basic characteristics haven't changed. It is showing better than average growth um, in the West, um, and I see no reason why that's going to change. You know, I would be very surprised if, maybe not over, if you looked at over, over the next five years, so the medium term, I'd be very much surprised if the area didn't show something like 30 to 50 percent premium compared to Auckland in general. Really? Yeah. Shivers, that's significant. Mm. Okay, that leads to my next question. Um, over the last three years, Ponsonby we know has basically been shown as recession proof in terms of the property market. What would be three key factors that will always underpin value in this area? Well, there's probably more than three, but um, <clears throat> just thinking about it, I mean, the fact, the proximity to the city and to the Harbour Bridge, that's not going to go away, you know? that's. That's a genuine benefit to um, professional buyers that have got the, the money to, to afford these. They want to be close to the city and to the North Shore and those places. So that's good. The second thing is probably the trendy factor, you know? And again, that's probably got an, at least another 10 years to go before um, it potentially could lose that trendy factor. Again, I think Grey Lynn is leading the way. I think Grey Lynn rather more than Ponsonby to some degree in a lot of people's eyes. Um, but we're starting to see other areas get embraced by that trendy factor. Eden Terrace, Arch Hill, that previously weren't on that list, it's rubbing off on them too. So they're all behaving differently, um, but the trendy factor and the fact that John Campbell and various other people, you know, live in the area, it's not going away. So that, that's probably the second point. And the third one, Kiwis love affair with villas, especially renovated ones that have been opened up at the back, you know. Um, and the inner west Greylin area, just like Mount Eden, it's Villa Central, really. And people just dream about living in villas, you know. Um, so it shows. So I think there are three points that, that basically reassure um, us that the market is, is going to continue growing well in this area. But I'm sure there are other ones. Hey, well thank you very much Stephen. I really appreciate your time. I think that was a really informative little session for our uh, clients. And look, we're looking forward to next time.